So last night I created a two hour video, it's a 360 video using the Rico Theta X that you see here. It's at uh, specifically low frame rate, two frames per second. The previous limitation was 20 minutes, but it does appear to work for two hours now. I have not uploaded a two hour file to Google Street View. Also, uh, if anyone does that, just uh, let me know. This is a 6.5 gigabyte file. It's pretty good for a two hour uh, video that's in 5.7K. Although it is lower frame rate and the lower frame rate is for video frame extraction. You can see here that the length is two hours long. That the frame width is 5760 by 2830. And I set it to the lower bit rate and the lower frame rate. To get the capabilities of the camera, I use the official Rico API, uh, which is on GitHub. They have the specs on GitHub. And the one that we're using with the Theta X is this Theta Web API version 2.1. So under there, there's these options. And we can check out the file format here. So we'll click on the file format and it gives these specifications, right? So if we dig down, we can say the 5.7K, 5 FPS and 2 FPS. And the 8K is 10 FPS, 5 FPS and 2 FPS. And this is for things like frame extraction or loading up, loading up to Google Street View. It's not used for um, type of entertainment or cinematic type of videos. This is if you maybe surveillance or especially if you want frame extraction and use the frames as images after that. So the summary of the API documentation is that the 8K video here can take it 10 FPS, 5 FPS, and 2 FPS. And the 5.7K video here is 5 FPS and 2 FPS. Uh, this one can also take it at 30 FPS if you want to use it in your like you know type of YouTube style videos. In addition to the file format, there's also this max recordable time, which we'll take a look at. Uh, max recordable time. Uh, it's now 7,200 seconds for the Recode Theta X. So if you check out the documentation, it says with the new firmware, which just came out uh, recently, I think in the last month, uh, the 5.7K or the 8K in this resolutions. Oh, it says 5.7K 10 FPS, which didn't appear to be in the documentation, I think. Okay, that's interesting. I think the, there's a, error in the documentation. I'll, I'll test it out at 10 FPS and we can see whether the camera actually can take the uh, 10 FPS video. All right, so you can see that I have it set to 5.7K 10 FPS, even though it's not in the documentation. I think they just forgot to add it in, um, but it, it does appear to work. So if I take the video, and I'll uh, stop the video. Okay, we can all see it. And I'll get the video onto my computer and I'll uh, just make sure the metadata shows that it's 10 FPS. So I just downloaded the videos onto my computer so to inspect it. If I right click on it, you can see that it's a short clip, it's seven seconds, 5.7K, and it's at 10 frames per second here. I have it on the, the uh, economy bit rate right now. We do some additional testing in the future for higher bit rates and see how it affects the video quality. And this is kind of how it looks like at 10 frames per second. 
So it appears to be uh, 10, 5, and 2 FPS. Dis so I'm testing this using this rep repository uh, on GitHub, theta-javascript. So if you have Node running your computer, you can go ahead and give it a, a shot. Uh, we'll eventually put these into some type of mobile app so it will be more accessible to people. But let's just review what I set up here. So what I did the primary testing with is this 8K and 5.7K. So let's look at the code. It's pretty straightforward. The body is in the API documentation. And we have this file format right here. Just a heads up that there's another problem with the Rico documentation. So if you copy this, they unfortunately have the documentation with smart quotes, which will result in an error when you send the option over to the camera. Let's see that problem right now. All right, so let's grab one of these and we can illustrate the problem with the Rico documentation and the easy workaround for the problem. So I just copied it into my clipboard and we'll go over to VS Code. Okay. So what you probably want to do is just copy it, right? Because it's relatively long. But let's see what happens when you try this. I'll comment that one out. File format is a string. And then you likely want to just drop this in, right? But my linter is saying that, oh, this is a problem. Okay, so let's look at this. This character is not a, it's not a normal uh, double quote here. Unfortunately, the documentation has this invalid uh, random character in here. So you just have to either parse it and change the, these quotes into the smart quotes into normal double quotes or you can just retype it. So what I did, uh, I just went to every smart quote and I put in a normal uh, double quote. So the sequence is you first send an option. So this is an API documentation. And if you need help with API documentation, just drop us a note on the forum or on this video, and we'll try and help you out. A little bit easier to answer questions on the forum, obviously. So you, options, and then the options has these parameters. Are they parameters? There's this keyword options, and then the file format is the keyword from the API documentation. You just drop it in here. The uh, only other thing is that for this particular example, we're taking the body here and we're converting it um, into we're using this JSON dot string on the body before we send it over, and then we set the header. A couple other commands. So one is the max recordable time. Uh, we set it to seven thousand two hundred seconds, which is two hours. Very similar. You can almost just copy the script. Um, from one option to another, and then just change the string here. Uh, this is a number, the 7,200. It's not a string. And the other one that we set up here is bitrate and fine and economy. This is also in the API documentation. So the trade-off between resolution and file size. So I set it to a smaller file size. And then... Um, so there's, oh, okay, I guess I have three different ones. So I, I did set it to economy. Oh, the last thing for the test is I set the sleep delay and the off delay to 65535, which will disable it. So this is available on GitHub, so you can inspect it. We tested all of these, and we'll be testing a bit more. Um... The other thing is we've added some basic documentation uh, for the low FPS video here. And last night I had 
maybe about 20 minutes into the test, I did have this warning heat icon come on. Uh, it was in a room with, you know, the windows were closed. It was kind of hot, just a general air temperature. It wasn't that hot, but it was somewhat hot. The camera kept running, so I just let it, I just let it keep running. Eventually, it, it turned off. I think it was night, and the actual air temperature was dropping. So um, it, it didn't fail, but I guess the camera was hot. And this is a new feature of the Ricoh. That instead of doing thermal shutdown, they raised the thermal shutdown spec. So it'll show that it's hot, but it'll just keep going until it reaches its upper threshold for thermal shutdown. Then eventually, it will, it will shut down. Another thing with this repository on GitHub, Theta JavaScript, is that for the X specific uh, API commands, I did start listing several of the things that are specific to the Rico Theta X. It's not comprehensive, but we could review some of the differences maybe in a future video. Uh, a lot of these we've already tested um, in different types of YouTube videos but you can get a quick look at some of the differences here. Uh, hopefully they'll s we'll either get into the mobile app soon or the official uh, interface on the body of the camera. But when I checked it this morning, I couldn't find, like I checked the menus on this thing and it didn't appear that the, uh, the settings were actually in the camera or on the official mobile app. If you if it's been added, uh, maybe you can drop a note and let me know. Help other people out. If you're not a developer and you want this type of feature, uh, we could probably make an application uh, that's kind of like a rudimentary GUI for it so that you don't have to code it and you could set the camera up uh, like this to take the longer two hour videos. There's different ways to do frame extraction programmatically. So here's an example uh, of using FFmpeg, which is some free software, to extract the frames programmatically. And there's some example scripts here if you want to test it out with the input video file and output as JPEG files. What you end up with is a set of JPEG files like this that you can then view in a, a 360 viewer like the Rico, uh, Rico desktop application or the basic app. And it'll look like a normal um, 360 image. The other workflow is to use Google Street View Studio. And you, so you take a 8K video generally and it automatically will convert it. So you upload the entire video file and you automatically convert it over into uh, these uh, images here. So this is actually one I took with the Ricoh Theta X. You can see what the quality is. This is from a video, right? So it just automatically converts it into still images. Kind of gives you a feel for why you'd want to use this type of technique. And then on, so if you upload to Google Street Map, you can get the blue line going here. Where it's nice, it links it automatically for you too. It's pretty nice. So here's another example that I took next to my office. And this one's a considerably longer walk out here to the point. It's still me here took it with the Rico Theta X video. And so you can basically just put it on a bicycle or walk and um, you can capture thousands of images and just upload it, the video file to Google Street View and you're off and running.